when I first uh, started working with Shepherd Square, um, you know, I heard a lot of uh, information from people from the city saying, why in the world would you want to work over there in such a neighborhood that is full of crime? Um, and I uh, took on a challenge, of course, and in that challenge, I, I've been able to work with some, some great people uh, in, in Shepherd Square. And so, you know, although the crime and the violence did play a role uh, in, the, in the neighborhood, um, there were also mothers who cared a lot about their kids, uh, fathers who uh, were uh, just a part of their children's lives. And then you had a couple seniors that actually held together the communities. Well, when I lived in Shepherd Square, I was really content with living in Shepherd Square. I uh, took pride in where I lived at, and uh, my kids took pride there. It was kind of a, a launching ground, so to speak, for people that were starting out. You had, you could come and live in the housing project, and there was, uh, there was a, rent, well, income limit, that if you reach that, then you had to move out. And that was the case with, you know, with my family. Many of the older residents, longer term residents who kind of really created the fabric of the community because, you know, Shepherd Square was known for having families um, with long history and long tenure living in the units. And when those families moved out and they get replaced with other uh, families that didn't necessarily have that history in the neighborhood, it began to change. When you, when you grow up in it, it's not, um, it's just the way it is. It's not, you don't know anything different. You know what I mean? It's just the way it's supposed to be. What, you walk outside, of course, you see somebody selling dope on the corner. Police chases, you know, big deal. You know, uh, it's just kind of the way it is. And until I went to college and experienced, um, you know, a different way of life, um, and then coming back, um, started to realize, hey, this is, you know, this is different. Fighting was a learned behavior in Shepherd Square. Like learn through experience. Learn through experience of you growing up. You get hit on the playground. You hit the person back. There's like, don't come back in here until you fight, uh, get through fighting. You might not go come here and cry in the house. Your mom tell you that at a young age, on the playground, don't let nobody hit you. Don't let nobody walk over you in life. Don't let nobody make fun of you on that playground. You better go back, back out there and fight them. Don't come back in until it's over with. You be coming there with scratches and cuts, crying, boo hoo hoo, slobbering. Uh, uh, Tears running all down your face. Go back out there and fight. That's what it was in Shepherd Square. Everybody up here fought everybody. We all love, we didn't, everybody didn't fought each other at least once. That's a must. This is Sparta, you know, it's, 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 it's a must. It's not, you know, it's not a, a disrespect thing. I don't like you. It's just something that happens, you know. I guess it's training. I got a couple dudes I love to death. I got a couple dudes that's gone I never see again. And I wish I could fight them one more time to let them know I love them, you know what I'm saying? But we grown now, but at the time, that's what it was, you know what I'm saying? And I, I can think of plenty of dudes that punched me square clean in my face, you know what I'm saying? I, I can't wait to see again, you know what I'm saying? Like, these are my guys, you know? I mean, I have my friends any way I could. They would have me in return. We would babysit for each other, all type of things. Have barbecues so all our kids could be together. Just have fun, and we just stayed ourselves, really. I had fun in Shepherd Square because I lived there, so I knew how to cope and I knew how to uh, with my surroundings. So, and then community, that's what it was, PCC. If you went, I mean, everybody knew each other. Everybody, yeah, like I said, if you're doing from there, you study out. So it was just like, yeah, I know you because we're from the same hood. We always had a group of us together. It wasn't a gang or anything. It was just a bunch of fellas who just had a love of each other, had a brotherhood for each other, who didn't have anything else but each other. And we'd talk about whatever went on about our, went on about our house, school, or whatever was going on in our lives or whatever. And it was like my brothers. And um, I miss that. You, you see a lot of things where we're not, we're not a unit anymore. We don't have the brotherhood or somebody that we can just call on or talk to. It's just basically the community is not a village anymore. As the years got older, 
it got better. And it got better as far as people started to be by themselves. A lot of people wasn't really out in the streets and helping each other out like they used to. Everybody kind of started being in their own zone. And it kind of like, I guess, that kind of made things a little bit um, different too, as far as like uh, attitudes. Mm -hmm. Because now that we all used to be sitting out on the porch talking to everybody speaking, and everybody's kind of like in their own zone. The income, I mean, it was typical, I guess, you know, typical Shepherd Square resident kind of income. We certainly didn't have much money, but you know, we made the best of what we had. But I remember um, uh, moving to one part of Shepherd Square and thinking it was a, I was living in a whole nother city or lo locale because we were actually people related to each other based on what block in Shepherd Square you live. And so that's pretty much how your social networks were, uh, um, the friends you had, and, and so on and so forth. They're examples for the young. And if the young, those who are willing, are willing to look at the examples from the past of the same individuals that, that came up from around the Smoketown area, and especially this housing complex, they more or less share an energy with them to let them know that because of your stressful conditions, because of your financial situation, there's no reason to collapse and give up. You have to understand that you have to be challenged sometimes in life. Now, from what I can remember, my mother told me that uh, Presbyterian Community Center at that time was called Grace, that they used to have social for young married couples. So their experience was, you know, as a young couple, they had activities for young, you know, young married couples, and um, pretty much it was a, I guess, a real good time, time to grow up, and also at the time, Shepherd Square was, wasn't a bad place to, bad place to be. Lawrence was my first source of a mentor. He just brought me in. He made me a junior staffer. He just really showed. He really showed me what was what was some gifts and tools that I could bring out. And I tried my best to work towards getting those out. And Miss um, Jeannie, she was a really good kind of like a grandmother to me, because my grandmother at home was kind of like never really around. And you know, um, Mama Jeannie, she always kind of like. Um, read books to me or asked me how my day was and are you hungry she was just kind of really very caring over at the old presbyterian community center we had plays uh, we went on field trips most every saturday to the center for the arts or either at actors theater the kids was exposed to a lot going over to Grace, a.k.a. PCC, you know what I mean? The dances with the canned goods and stuff, you know, all the skating parties, you know what I mean? The boxing, you know what I'm saying, of course. Then you sit up there, you can hear these historical, you know what I'm saying, stories about this great man that came right from the same tour, you know what I'm saying? Like, dang. Who's that great man? Man Ali, man, and, and several others. I kept getting flies in the mail about uh, uh, network meetings and uh, workshops, and I've never gotten that in any community I lived in. So I thought that was awesome. And I started volunteering over there as, uh, in, in the admin part, and I uh, got a job being the assistant of the director of programs. It was a good and it was a bad thing living in Shepherd Square because that was, after t uh, trying to get my GED for 10 years, I got my GED there, and I went on to go to college there for uh, two semesters and then I had uh, two daughters graduate from high school and um, my other children, younger children, they came involved with the Presbyterian Community Center which they did a whole lot of activities. It was a place to go because you pretty much had three options. Um, be involved in the church activities, be involved in Grace or PCC's activities, or be involved in the activities out, out on the street. It was good that you had some other options, you know, especially like I said, when you're not conscious of, you know, what's going on, you're just a kid. It's easy 
to, uh, to get involved in the activities that's going on in the streets. Um, so it, it's good that we had a safe haven uh, to go to um, to kind of distract you and um, you know keep you off of uh, keep you off the streets. So many people shake me here, uh, Mr. Baldy. Man, he used to t tell me a whole lot of things just about life and about the world. Um, you got Mr. John. He used to just teach me about business. He used to drill me on business. You think about Camp Edwards, who gave me a chance to work in here when nobody else gave me a chance to work in here. You think about um, think about the older men that used to um, like say, "Hey, boy, stop that! Do something else! Get away from her!" You think about all the people in your community that that touched your life and blessed you in certain ways. I had got into African culture and drumming. I started doing that in '80. Well, Nana Yah had got some money from the Kentucky Center for the Arts for a three months artist in residence. So she wanted me to teach a drum class, which I did for three months, and then I continued on to volunteer. During that time, there was a vacant position at which was now called Presbyterian Community Center. I had met Miss McDonald through some family associations a couple of years earlier. So since I hadn't found a job, she asked me would I be interested in a job at Presbyterian Community Center. And I said, yes, yeah. so I started in 95. This is 2012, I'm still here. The history of, uh, of Shepherd Square is so significant, though, because if you look up the people who emerged through this experience, uh, who you know, literally uh, became known worldwide. Uh, well, Muhammad Ali, for example, wasn't a resident, but was a frequent um, visitor, and he trained um, in in this in this neighborhood. You take Leonard Lyles, lived right on Jackson Street. Uh, you take um, Daryl Owens as an attorney, a politician, grew up in Shepherd Square. Um, there's many well-known business community leaders that have history. Uh, in Shepherd Square, Carl Jones Clay with um, Republic Bank, uh, you know, and those, these are all relationships that go back um, through family ties. There, there's a lot. There's a lot of lineage when you look at um, African American leadership that that can find its way through relationships back to Shepherd Square at some point.